as you can tell, I am not a professional videographer, and I am uh, going to narrate a video I put together, and pretty much the video is just a mishmash of stuff. I'm just showing you uh, the black bucket that the five-gallon filter is made in, and that you're going to be drilling a hole with a hole saw right smack in the middle of the bucket. And out of that hole is going to be the tube that comes off your pump. When you cut the bucket, you're going to want to have a, a rim on both ends to hold the sponge material in. So your lid is going to be cut with a rim and the bottom of the bucket is going to be cut with a rim. So that's the top um, cut with a rim. And then if you look at the bottom of the bucket, you'll see it also has kind of a lip on it. So you'll be cutting two holes. I've used jigsaws before. I like that. Um, and you can just guide on the outside edge of the bucket to make a nice uniform cut. I've also used a pocket knife and um, I used a Dremel one time uh, with a, a cutting bit on it. So you can do it any different way you want. It doesn't have to be pretty, um, but this is all made in a bucket. One of the reasons I like this um, filter is because it will handle tremendous waste. Um, I had one in with a fly river turtle and it's handling 12 ounces of poop each week. Um, one of the pieces of material in the filter is a Weber brand charcoal grill bottom grate replacement. It's about $12 on Amazon and it fits inside just about perfectly. You need two of them. Uh, one goes on one side of the pump and the other goes on the other side of the pump. And basically what it does is it keeps the filter media from collapsing on the pump because when it finally the filter media gets dense it will uh, collapse on and wrap around the pump and choke it down and um, these grates will keep the filter media nice and straight and out where it needs to be so it can do its job a lot longer um, what, to hold the grates in place you just drill a hole in the side of the bucket and then you run a cable tie in through the grate and then back out and then you pull it tight on the outside of the bucket um, so there's the pump being trapped between the two grates and then the um, round discs of media that you're going to cut open cell foam discs are going to fit in the bucket on either side of the pump and be held in place by the rim that you've left on the bottom of the bucket and in the top so this filter costs i don't know hundred dollars to make because the pump is about 30 the buckets about well the bucket you can get at Home Depot for four dollars so you can buy a black one on Amazon for 17 um, the grates are eleven dollars each so that's twenty two dollars so 50 60 and then the open cell foam is uh, something on the order of ten dollars for a sheet that'll do both sides uh, so um, the circular open cell foam you're just going to want to cut it into discs and you can use the bucket itself as a template so you would just basically put the um, put the bucket on the open cell foam the 24 by 17 sheets are what I like of the open cell foam because you can make at least two discs out of that media save the rest of it because you can do plants in it on another video I'll show you uh, how to do that and um, so open cell foam, basically you can cut it in a circle, you can use a serrated blade, you can use scissors, you can use uh, a razor blade, a really sharp pocket knife. These are the finer black open cell foam media that I've used before. I like it. I don't like it as the first layer because it's so dense it will clog in a week or two. Um, I like to use the black filter media on the inside against the pump and then um, I like to do a couple layers of that and then I'll use the blue coarser open cell foam as the last layer uh, on the outside. That filter media, those black open cell foam pieces are over a year and a half old so it's not an expendable in the filter. You basically just take those out and wring them out. It's a pain in the ass to clean but you don't have to do it a lot. Um, so then putting the last coarse layer of blue open cell foam on there and then that would just pop out right so then when you put the lid on it is uh, that's the retainer that, there you go so that's the retainer that keeps those uh, pads in place so basically what you have is the uh, pump in the center with its uh, discharge sticking out through that hole 
and then you've got two grates, one on either side of the pump to protect it from solids. And then you've got a lot of layers of uh, open cell foam, which is somewhat porous, but as it uh, picks up stuff from the pond or tank, it gets uh, better and better at doing fines. Discharge of the, uh, or positioning of the cord, it can just go off the pump, around the grates and out uh, of the filter around the pads. It doesn't matter if you're real um, anal about it. You can drill a hole in the side and have the, um, the uh, cord go out the side of the filter, but then you've got a hole in the side of the filter the size of the actual plug. So it's kind of a big hole. Um, this is the filter all put together. If you're careful, you can put it together in such a way that the label isn't sitting up, that the label is actually pointing down. When I use these, I like to have the discharge going across the bottom of the pond or tank. I don't usually have a high flow aimed at the surface, although it will oxygenate great, and I would turn it up like that uh, in the event that I was um, uh, dealing with sick fish or something, I needed oxygenation to be at the max. This is another one I put together for the video, and basically it explains that if the uh, hole is too big for the tubing, you can fill in around it just by making a collar of open cell foam that goes around the tubing and between the pump and the side of the bucket. Basically, when the water goes in there, it encounters a sponge, which keeps the, um, the filter from it getting any solids. And the three inch um, deck screws are basically just for holding the pump in place. So like now the pump can't back out because I put a three inch deck screw through the tubing and it actually goes through the, um, the plastic of the pump discharge, which screws in and out of these particular pumps. That pump is not a free C um, that's linked in the uh, article on this. Now, you might have just seen there's a weight. It's a, like a two pound weight that is uh, attached to the grill. And uh, that basically keeps the filter leaning the way I like it to. Also, if the filter happens to suck air, it will keep the pump, the uh, filter on the bottom. So there's the pump sandwiched between the two grates. It's ready to be loaded with the open cell foam and then the edges put in, uh, the, the rim will keep that open cell foam in place. So you can see the design is really, really simple. Again, it's a pump in the middle coming out the side, nothing fancy. Two grates, on uh, one on either side of it to protect the pump from solids and then the open cell foam nice thick layer of open cell foam with the coarsest layer facing the world. Um, when you have to clean this, or at least for interim cleanings, you only have to clean the uh, outermost coarse layer and then you can put it back in. You don't have to do all the layers all the time. Um, flow rates will determine when you need to clean the filter. Um, if the flow off the pump is declining, then it means that the uh, sponges are kind of full of material. And so the egress in, uh, of water is difficult. Then you would uh, be inclined to take it apart and clean those sponges. You should not have to access the pump between those panels. Uh, but if you do, um, you can just cut the cable ties, take it apart, get to the pump, fix it, and then put the grate back in. This is the filter deployed on the bottom of a 300 gallon. There is a hole in the top. It's a small, I don't know, quarter inch hole. And what that does is it allows air that might get into the filter. It allows that air to get out um, because sometimes they'll get air in them and then they'll try to float up. Um, this is discharging across the surface, which oxygenates. Um, but like I said, I normally like to have it discharging across the bottom. It creates the same swell, but all the way over on the other side, and it doesn't distort the water surface for looking at the fish. I like it because it can't suck small fish in. Um, it uh, provides, you know, where the uh, sponges are exposed, it provides the little fish a place to kind of pick and eat uh, on some of the algae that grows there. And like I said, it doesn't uh, suck up baby fish or small fish. As you can see in this 300 gallon, I don't have very many big fish. Those are all feeder guppies from PetSmart. And I'm just enjoying them. Um, I had koi, uh, but when you have exposed fish like this in a 300 gallon vat, that is so easy for herons and other birds to come get them. I'm not going to put expensive koi on that uh, particular shenanigan. So um, that is pretty much the uh, five gallon bucket filter. 
Um, its construction is relatively simple. You probably don't even need a schematic at this point. The parts list is in this article. Um, uh, mainly the tricky part is the Weber charcoal grate replacements, 10 and a half inch. Those fit right in the bucket. Um, I used to have white ones that I made, but the black ones have a tendency to disappear. It'd be nice if there was black open cell foam that was coarse, but I haven't found it. And I, honestly, I don't really care, and I'm not going to um, remake these for that to happen. Uh, maybe if I make more for another system or whatever, I'll do that. So thanks for paying attention. I hope that you'll enjoy a five gallon bucket filter. Like I said, they're cost effective and they work great. Four ounces of poop three times a week, easy from that turtle and they handle it uh, just fine. For more information, drjohnson.com or savingsickfish.org. Thanks.